Hello, my name is Adam Smith. I'm a primary school teacher in London and welcome back to my channel. It's really good to see you. Um, today, what I'm going to talk about is Notion. I'm a massive Notion nerd um, and I've kind of over the last year got into the habit of whenever I think to myself, oh, I need to organise this or I need to organise that part of my life, I just think, well, I'll just whack it in Notion and um, increasingly all of my life is in there. You know, There's this notion of notion there's this notion of having a um, a second brain Tiago Forte has just had a book out about this um, where you use uh, notion as a way of capturing all your sort of thoughts uh, and that's that's essentially how I've been trying to use it as a second brain somewhere to store things that um, I know I'll need to access in the future so today I'm going to talk about how I have used notion as a trip planner as a travel planner um, I travel a fair amount. I've travelled more before COVID. Um, I particularly enjoy travelling around Europe um, and when I travel I like to combine lots of different methods of transport. So I might fly somewhere and then take a train and then take a ferry and then take a bus and I like to visit lots of different cities in one trip. Um, I get quite a lot of time off as a teacher um, so it's really fun to, to plan these sort of fairly long holidays um, but do it on the cheap where you're visiting lots of different cities in different ways. And that's what I did this summer. So um, I went on a, a really, really nice trip. Um, I flew to Copenhagen and then I travelled to Gdansk in Poland. I took the train to Warsaw. Um, I flew from Warsaw to Tallinn, which is in Estonia. Um, I hung out with a friend in uh, Tallinn. It was a really interesting city. Uh, and then I went and stayed for a week with a friend in um, Helsinki, which was just beautiful. Helsinki is probably like my second favourite city, if not my favourite city in Europe. Uh, really gorgeous holiday. Um, the problem is that's a lot to keep on track of. So what I used to do when I planned these trips was I would keep everything in a, a Gmail folder um, with all the confirmations and then I would have um, my paper diary uh, and my Google Calendar and I would put sort of flights and things like that in there. And that was that was okay, it worked. Um, it's a bit kind of, you have to search through these, these even these Gmail folders and emails are really inconsistent. Uh, so some airlines will just send you an email that's just like, flight confirmation CJD W96 and you're like, yeah, but from where to where and with which airline? <laughs> Um, so that's why I decided to use Notion. Um, I uh, will take you through what I did now and we'll have a look. Okay, so here we're back on my knowledge base. This is where I keep all of my sort of important information. This is increasingly my homepage when I come on to Notion. I have a daily planner um, with my tasks and my timetable on, but um, at the moment I'm using this a lot. So we'll go here to trips. Now I've only got two trips in here um, uh, because I just haven't got any more trips planned at the moment, but uh, this has been a successful experiment for me and something that I'm definitely going to replicate in the future. So we'll have a look at this one here. Poland, Estonia, Finland 2022. Um, and as you can see, uh, there's different categories of information here. And the good thing with Notion is um, there's no limit on the number of pages you can make. You don't feel like you have to ration it. Um, and therefore, rather than having all the information on one particular page, you can create different pages. And I'll speak to you in a bit about how you can actually reuse those pages in the future. So the first thing I did um, when I knew where I was going was I put in a calendar view um, for a trips calendar and I basically put in the dates so I knew where I was going to be I knew I was going to be in Gdansk on the 24th Warsaw on the 25th Tallinn Helsinki etc uh, then I put in the hotels that I was staying at um, so if, for example you know city box in Tallinn uh, put in there and then I put in the the travel information I made each of these an individual page so that I could include all the confirmation emails and things like that and I'll show you those pages in a second and this is actually very similar to what I used to do on Google Calendar so it wasn't an unusual process for me. Uh, the next thing I did was I then went and made pages for the cities, the transport, and the hotels that I was visiting. So we'll start with the hotels and we'll work backwards. I mean, these are really straightforward. So for example, here in uh, Tallinn, I've literally pasted in the link to the email confirmation that I had um, and the amount that I was going to pay on arrival. You can include other information here, like uh, where the hotel is. You can even embed a map into this. You could have information about uh, what the rooms are like and things like that. But I kind of knew where I was staying. I knew where it was in Tallinn. It's by the harbour. It's a very nice hotel. Um, so that wasn't too much uh, information. I've got the date in there, so it appears correctly in the calendar view. Um, I also uh, then made these travel pages. So these travel pages are really useful. If we look at the train, for example, from Gdansk to Warsaw, you can see I've actually embedded the ticket in here. 
Um, so I would have had this saved on my phone as an offline file, but it's actually useful to have that information right in front of you. I've got when it departs from Gdansk uh, at 902, although it was late because Polish Railways, um, and when it arrives at Warsaw Centralna, uh, which was also late, um, and which uh, carriage I need to sit in and where I need to sit. And I did actually have this up on my phone when I was at the platform at Gdansk um, so that I could confirm and know where I was going. Same thing with flights. So, for example, here's my flight from Helsinki to Heathrow, and I, I was departing from Terminal 2, uh, and I've got a link there to the, the confirmation. Um, with these flights, you just use a boarding pass uh, in your Apple wallet, so you don't need to have that confirmation email uh, PDF in your phone and things like that. Um, and again, like ferry, very similar idea. So that was actually really useful to have all of that transport information in one place, in one category to look through, because then I could see, like, I was doing flight, flight, train, flight, ferry, flight, and I knew where I was going to go and I knew what I was doing. Now, the really um, sort of game changer here uh, for how I use this it, are these cities pages. So I had been to some of these cities before, uh, been to Helsinki and Gdansk and Warsaw before, and I hadn't been to Tallinn before. Um, but I didn't really want to take um, guidebooks with me. I was traveling with just hand luggage, and guidebooks are quite big. Um, so I thought, well, actually, do you know, I'm going to sort of maybe look into creating my own guidebook before I go and think about what I want to see before I, before I leave. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's basically a library of books that you pay Apple for access to. Um, and the reason I pay for that is because it includes, uh, as far as I can tell, every single Lonely Planet guide on um, uh, on Amazon and they they tend to be the most up to date ones as well which is great so you don't need to have a physical copy you can buy these as ebooks um, you could uh, sometimes uh, libraries are actually really good for taking out travel guides because there's something that you don't need to keep really after your holiday unless you're very sentimental so I took out um, from Amazon Unlimited the the Estonia Latvia Lithuania Hel uh, the the Finland and the Poland guides and I sat down with them and. I uh, made some notes about uh, where I wanted to visit uh, and I created these city pages uh, in order to do that, uh, to keep, keep track of all those notes. So this is the page for Gdansk. It's really nice to make these look nice. You kind of feel excited about where you're going to go. So I had this nice picture of the old town in Gdansk. Um, I've got my hotel, how I'm arriving and how I'm leaving. And then here I've got um, the information that I took from uh, the guidebook that I was reading. Um, I didn't sort of copy and paste, I just took the information that I thought I was going to be interested in. Um, I ended up, I was literally only there for one day, but I did see most of these things, um, which was pretty exciting. Uh, it meant that I was able to um, be a bit more targeted with what I was seeing. I kind of think in the past I've liked to just like, like, last time I was in Gdansk, I went to like one museum, but I kind of wandered around and absorbed the atmosphere. But this time I was like, no, I want to see these things. These are interesting. This is kind of how the history of Poland is shown through this city. Um, so I did that. And you can also include things like, for example, here you can include a, um, a map of the city, of the trams and the trains. This helped me. Um, my hotel was a little bit out of the centre. It was sort of down here. Um, and this helped me to realise how to get to the station and um, how to get to the airport and back and things like that. So that was great. And I did the same thing for Tallinn as well. So again, I've not been to Tallinn before. I um, looked into uh, how I was going to get there, what kind of places I wanted to see. Um, again, I ended up seeing quite a lot of these places, which was uh, nice and exciting. And also I thought about where I wanted to eat as well. Um, so this, oh, this cafe here, um, NOP Cafe, uh, was really, really good. I went there with my friend in the morning and we had a really good breakfast. It was really nice. And again, the tram maps in there. Um, the re what I think is that, again, like, a I mean, this is nice. It's like a little guide for where you're going. But what is really great about these city pages is they're totally reusable. So essentially, you can say I was going to Tallinn again. Um, a, I've got all this information already available. Um, B, it's totally editable and changeable. So I can go in here and I can say, okay, well, these are the places that I did get to visit, but these are the places I didn't get to visit and I want to visit on my next trip. These are the cafes that I really enjoyed. This is the museum that I want to visit again. Um, put in memories. You can include photos in here and have it almost like a trip report of somewhere that you've been. And then next time you go to Tallinn, you can uh, change the date here, change the subfolder it's in, it's in that trip folder at the moment, move it across to the new trip folder, or just have these kept in like a general cities folder. Um, and then, yeah, you can add to it, you can change it, you can create it. So that way you end up with a sort of database 
of information about different cities that you're traveling to or that you want to travel to. So I'm thinking at the moment about planning a trip to Germany in order to practice my German in October. Um, and I want to visit um, places in East Germany, so Berlin, Leipzig, Dresden, um, Chemnitz, uh, Rostock, and I'm just about to start planning that. So I'm gonna create a city page for each one of those. Now, I might decide that in the end, I'm actually not gonna visit Rostock, but I will have done the planning for it and found out the interesting things about it. Now, my interest is in East German history and DDR history. Uh, so I will specifically tailor it to that. Whereas obviously a generic guidebook is only gonna give you a little bit of information about that history and focus on lots of other things. So it's really great to have that. And it's really nice to be able to, eventually you would have like a list of all the different cities that you've been to uh, and then it's nice to have those memories from there. So that is basically how I have used this um, as a trip planner. The other little things here are like, I've got a link to my travel insurance that I took out. And of course, like the classic notion thing of having a packing list. So I was using this on my phone as I was packing to go away, um, all the different things that I would need uh, for that. So next time I travel, I think I'll basically just copy and paste that list into that folder. Um, yeah, and I found it a really useful thing. You know, not, notion, the, the, the absolute benefit of it is just how incredibly flexible it is. You can plan anything from, you know, your startup business to your, your trip to S. Estonia. So it, it's really great to see these different ways. Um, there's not really templates to share because it's basically not that complicated to set this up. Um, the only slightly complicated thing is creating this uh, calendar view and essentially it, it, it's just a table um, of all these different pages. I've tagged each one to say you know destination, hotel and travel. You put the date in and that's really important um, and you if you want to include a beginning and an end date so if it's something that's over multiple days you just tick this box here that says end date um, and then you can choose a date that's a bit later on uh, yeah and and then you instead of having it as a table view you just put it as a, a calendar view and it shows you it like this which is really nice i think the only thing i would kind of wish for from notion really is a little bit more flexibility with the calendar view so i would like it for example to start on the 24th um, and go on from there or I'd like to have um, like a an annual view and a, a, a weekly view and things like that that would that would be a really good feature to come next from Notion so that's something I'm looking forward to as ever I really appreciate all your uh, your comments your likes your views it's really nice to have you here thank you for your support with this channel um, I hope you're having a, a great afternoon morning evening whenever it is when you're watching this um, and I will speak to you very soon cheers bye-bye